at least for me, um, I don't like solely drawing cartoony all the time. I don't like drawing realistically all the time. I think only now am I finding a nice balance between the two. We have our circle. So we're drawing Erica. A lot of times it, when they um, in the Riley method, they will slim up their women a lot. Just idealized, and that's up to you. Do you want to if you want to slim the woman a little bit more, you can. If you want to just keep it more accurate in terms of body type, that's it's up to you. She's looking down, so I'm going to extend half radius down. I mean, one radius, I mean. Get her skull shape. Like I said, I want to take my time here. I don't want to do what I did yesterday, just rush and screw myself and then have to fix. I don't have a problem with fixing stuff. I just hate it if I fi have to fix stuff because I know I rushed. And especially when we do when you're when you do the homework later for the the longer uh, the long pose stuff, you know, it's because we're going to take our drawings to kind of a finish. Usually rendering it will take, uh, I'm guessing about five hours. If you don't spend enough time on the, uh, on this land part, you will be in hell the whole time you're rendering. So when I was doing these long poses, um, you know, I had teachers tell me that you guys are half of you are gonna, well, more than half of you are gonna be in hell when you're doing these because you're not gonna spend enough time on the lay-in. And you know, they they told you, they told me, and still I screwed up. So you just learn from doing it over and over and over again. So you don't like this feeling? Well, you'll stop. <laughs> it's kind of like the the hot stove thing. Your parents can tell you the stove is hot. It's only after. Well, maybe, maybe not all of you are like this. It's only after you actually go and touch that stove and you go, oh crap, it's hot. And you burn your hand, you realize, oh man, it's hot. So it's kind of the same deal with this, or, or very similar to when you do a lay-in. Yeah, exactly. That's, well, that's that's drawing though. First week you'll go, oh yeah, okay, okay, the, the stove is hot, okay, I won't do that anymore. Next week, um, I think it's not that hot today, or it shouldn't be that hot, and you burn your hand again, and eventually you stop. The shoulder on this side, so just take your time. I didn't get to do a lot of warm-up drawing this morning. So, you know, this is great. Back is arching. So let's measure measure it out. Two. One. Somewhere 
here. Once you mark off the bottom like this, don't ju don't just continue drawing. Uh, look back up at the head and then just recalibrate. It looks a little bit long. We should be somewhere here. This feels more correct. Okay, if this is the rib cage, then the this will be something like this. Back of my neck. Find the other side of my neck. Somewhere here. So let's use that Riley rhythm. I guess we can kind of apply it here. Or it fits in pretty well. Find the average width. There's the hip. Modify my center line. Here's my pelvis, 10th rib. Crotch. And start drawing the shape of my legs. So I can already tell her limbs are a little bit short, like her limbs. But I'm gonna make the choice to make her limbs a little bit longer. So maybe somewhere here. Get the gesture of her, her arms. Can I relate the two arms across? Like I said, this is where I spend a lot of my time. I don't really care about all the all the little details. I want to design a very good lay-in or a very appealing lay-in. A thigh width. Basically, I just draw a Barbie doll. Right? If I find the overall width of the hip, and then I just attach the legs. I just don't, right now, I'm just not drawing all of it. Whatever the, the legs are doing. Does that make sense? Well, you don't need to draw. Um, everything um, just yet so I, I guess the feet will be somewhere here this draw the other leg um, I'm, I don't really care about the arms as much at this point mainly because it's a standing pose and I need to make sure that she's standing if I get her standing properly then I can draw well let's get her standing properly I can just make up the arms so I have a hierarchy. There's this nice rhythm that goes down to the crotch, but also I can use it if I just split it off a little to go into the, um, the other leg. See that leg is somewhere 
here. One of the tricks is, I'll, even when I see the leg bumped out like this, I don't draw that. I'll just draw the shin bone. I find it much easier. Okay, and there's my foot. And I, I can already see that I brought my... Um, legs out a little bit further, but I kind of like that. So I widened this up a little bit. That's fine. I'm okay with that. Okay, so she's standing. So technically right now I can just do this, I can do that, um, and the pose still works. Does that make sense? So now I can go in. Um, usually in the beginning I will draw um, indicate stuff for the arms just so that I can come back to it. You know, Basically, it's just to have something there. So again, I want to relate both arms. It's on this side, it's on the other side. And the way I draw um, arms bent and stuff like that is I don't draw, I try not to draw the outside first. I'll draw the negative shape on the inside. For some reason, that makes it easier to judge that distance. Keep that simple. There's a cool bend in her arm. Very extreme. If the arms are like crazy bent, I'll use this type of shape. And then I'll connect the arms to that. Mainly because that's actually the, the bone is actually doing that. Looks like it's gonna curve down. Over here is your ear. my triangle shape so here is my Erica Does that make sense? Now all I have to do is go in and add, start adding just simple overlaps. It's not bog. I'm not like once again. I'm not bogged down with all the little details. But let's say right now I want to go in and I want to start um, adding lightness. Because the idea is this, you design a really nice Eric or Erica, even if you don't achieve likeness, you'll have a solid figure. This comes down here. Here's the clavicle. 
just doing the little in internal details now. Getting an overlap from the shoulder. What I like about long poses is that I learned all my shorthands, you know, like the when you when you're drawing the like quick stuff that you do. I learned all of it from doing long poses. Cause the idea is if you drew something with two lines like one, two, three lines, right? Now you have the time to go, oh okay, well I can make it one line. Three to one. And if this works, it becomes part of your shorthand, which you which you, you will use later on. There's her, uh, there's a bump here for the bicep muscle. <laughs> if I went back to, to, um, uh, school and I saw the old old me I would just tell myself you know um, a lot of times just render it at home just so many little cool details that I would, I would try to get in like uh, a three-hour pose and well I, I don't have time to get it all but if I laid everything in and just made notes of it, my drawing would look a lot more finished and I would be able to add all that subtlety. So right here, there's a slight bump. I'm debating whether I should put that in or not. I'm thinking I won't. I'm trying to see if I can keep it even more um, simple than it is. And if I do try to add that bump later, I'll try to do it by adding a, um, a half tone there or something. So it gives the illusion that there's, there's, a, there's, a, there's a, a bump. It's a trick that Line Decker does all the time. Like the shape itself is really simple, but because there's contrast between the uh, internal shapes and the, um, his whole, the, the silhouette is very simple. It looks like there's a lot of bumps when there actually isn't any. Let's draw that arm. Let's go to it. Let's. This makes sense so far because I'm gonna go and touch up her head. Or get get her head. Cool. And I'll explain all the the rhythms I'm kind of designing on the fly. And you can already see it right here. There's the corner of her clavicle, her nipple, her, her tenth rib, and it goes to the crotch, giving me So I'm gonna design her head or her head shape. Because until I draw her head, the body, all that, it doesn't look so nice. In this class, when we do a, um, you know, like the longer studies, remember, spend a, a decent amount of time on the head. You can draw the best torso ever, and no one cares if the head looks off. That is all people will look at, I, get, I, I promise you. In terms of the body, as long as it has nipples and you know center line and you know on her you can't see it on men you draw the you know the, the faint little fingers yeah the little rib or something they'll buy it as a as a um, um, a full body because that's all we're accustomed to seeing and it's not like you see shirtless people all the time or 
you know, the average person doesn't see a shirtless person walking across the street all the time. So if you screw up on, 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 a, on a body part, as long as it's not that big, um, you can get away with it. But if you screw up on a head, it's a different story. Okay, so it looks like the head's a little bit smaller than I, her head is smaller than Eric. I mean the Eric I drew. So let's just envelope this shape for now. Here is her. bone and her cheekbone combined. Her face is pretty round. Their jawline is here. I can see it, but because she's pulling her head back a little bit, the flesh around her face is bunching up. Her ears are smaller. Does make sense? All I'm doing is just modifying the, the head shape right now. I use the same mentality to do a short pose as I, I do to do a long pose. The only difference is time and um, what I'm willing to sacrifice. doesn't matter how good you are in a 5-10 minute drawing, you're going to have inaccuracy. So then it has to become more about, you know, what's, what's your focus? Does that make sense? So don't be bummed out if in 10 minutes, you, you know, as long as you don't get something big wrong, like the, uh, um, like proportions or what is the figure doing or what is the head, you know, the head is completely wrong. Um, it should be fine, especially if you have a, a clear goal in mind. Like uh, I'm going to today when I draw, I just want to make sure I get, uh, um, I don't know, let's, let's give ourselves a task. I want to make sure my proportions look good. So, all right, well, maybe that day you don't do the, the best drawing with shape or best um, whatever, uh, whatever the thing is, but if your proportions are, all your proportions are good that day, well, you kind of had a successful drawing day. This, this mindset, that I'm talking about, it applies to everything. If you're designing a character and you know, it doesn't matter how, how much time you have, if you have n nothing specific that you're designing, like I, if I just come up to you and say, hey, design me a bad guy, it, that's too general, right? Like you, don't, you won't really have a clear goal or what to aim for. But if I came up to you and said, I want to, I want to, um, I don't know, let's see. We well, used pirate before. A pirate, a space pirate that is medium build. I don't know, not medium build. Maybe someone like Steve Buscemi. Um, and they don't like to use.
No, I, I, I don't need to feel I need to make that. It's not really contour either. Um, even when you paint, you're focusing on overall shape. Because even like sometimes when I paint with a I think there there should be a a, a a way to I mean let me let me explain this this is because this is not pure contour drawing right you're kind of designing actually you are not kind of you're really designing and second drawing this way what it does is it makes it very clear about what your shape is going to be so even if you start do a loose drawing like the, or a loose painting like this where you go all right well here's the front of the face here's the ear uh, here's the neck so you're drawing someone that looks kind of like Tony Ferguson I guess right this is strictly mass based right or do you just have a mass here? Because you're very clear about your silhouette or what kind of shapes you want to use, I mean, in the beginning, you're being very general because you're not 100% sure. What ends up happening is when it's time to carve out your shapes, You're very clear. People who simply draw contour drawing, yeah, I would argue that's bad. I agree with that. Well, what completely changed my mind about this type of drawing was when I, when I started to learn how to paint and there was an artist who told me there's no such thing as form it's just all about shapes and edges and your edges and like your shapes need to be very clear I mean what is a shape it's this and it's your ability to judge the edges which is actually if you think about it the contour you know, what edge is this? What edge is this? What kind of edge is this? What kind of edge is this? Does that make sense? Let me just quickly draw a face on here. And if you look at the way Leindecker paints, or actually a lot of painters, the way they paint, they'll define a shape and then they'll fill it in. You define a shape and fill it in. And then you worry about what these edges are representing. If this edge is supposed to be sharp, then it becomes a sharp edge. If this edge here is soft, then it becomes a softer edge. I think ultimately you need both disciplines so you shouldn't really neglect one but as long as you are using it properly uh, thinking about it I guess in the in the proper context like it, it, it doesn't matter I mean like when someone asks oh it's just contour drawing so well okay well if that's how you see it then well that's how you see it but I can still explain what this is like so it's not simply co uh, contour drawing
Sorry, I was trying to draw Tony Ferguson out of my head. There's a UFC fight going on right now, or today. No, not with Tony Ferguson though. It's with uh, Nate and okay. So everything is a shape. And everything, I still have to think about the edges, which you can, I guess you can call it contour. Just recapping. Well, it looks kind of like Tony Ferguson, as I got it, I guess. Shoulder. So even if I want to start knocking in the uh, the background, well, what do I have to do? I still have to think about the contour, the actual shape. This is jaw. Right, and I can I have to decide. Oh, this is gonna be uh, blown up by light a little bit. This is hair. So it's gonna be blown up by light a little bit. Does that make sense? Cool. Alright, so I'm just going in and redesigning my lay-in. If someone um, says that to you in a like a derogatory term, you can just say, yeah, it's, I just draw a card. Uh, Contour, but it, it has a lot of it's style, have a lot of style. Anyway, uh, here's the breast. I, I still want to see, like, even if I draw a breast, I want to try to see if I can relate it somehow. Um, I can see that I can relate it back to the neck, at least to start the breast. my breast shape here's the nipple on this side here's her chest shape on this side nipple on this side Oops, did I? Oh, I went on a separate layer. Oops, I didn't mean to do that. Just merge the two. So there's this bump here. I don't like it. I think I want to slim out her waist just a little bit. We're almost done. I'm going to get down to her uh, waist soon. Let's see. Let me scatter this back to 34. I think the nipple needs to be a little bit lower. The back rhythms? Sure. Back rhythms are exactly the same as the front rhythms in, in that Riley chart. They just added like uh, a few other little details. And to be honest, there's a few I, I don't understand. And, and Mark never explained it to me. Um, At a certain point, I view a lot of that stuff as guidelines. 
just like in composition we have golden mean not every every uh, painting has to be a golden mean or every composition oh, I think Bill Perkins said it best those are all rules and guidelines because without them sometimes we have nowhere to start and the most intimidating thing ever is staring at a blank canvas or a blank page tenth rib is here okay so let's get the shape of the the legs I'll draw all the rhythms that I'm putting into um, into this figure though you saw the big Riley one that I explained earlier today I want her to feel graceful, so even though there's all these bumps, I want to play them down a little bit. With limbs, you'll have leeway because how many people know leg types? Or if you did a, a drawing of, 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 uh, of a model, they're going to look at the leg and say, oh, her, that, that's not her legs. So you can see it kind of cuts in like this. I don't want that because I want this leg to feel a little more graceful. So I'm going to change it a little bit. Yeah, you can tell between male and female because uh, women have the, the, the wider hips. But that's just general, like a general rule. So even, even this heel here, I want to relate it to maybe some, a detail over here. By the way, a lot of this you'll do on the fly the more you get used to looking for this stuff. Something made sense? Awesome. Oh, what was it? So we're almost done. You see this bump here? I mean, okay, this is what I mean. This bump here, I can draw it in, right? Oh, okay. Um, but at least to me, it's not, I don't like that shape. I know that's her leg. Um, if, if it's just for your, your sanity, what you can do is you can actually just draw it the way it looks and then edit it after, which is what I used to do. But um, I think if I make this smoother, it will look better. Just visually and um, aesthetically, it's more pleasing. So that's part of the Riley thing. So I will smooth out her leg. Yeah, I know she has weight on it, so her muscle is tense. But what I'll do is rather than... Um, bump it out like this make sure that her knee is in roughly the same spot okay I'll start incorporating a little bit more straights in this um, in her other in this leg ultimately it leads to a better image I'm gonna do it Yeah, that's the only one the only reason why I went over that one and I'm highlighting that one is because that's the most consistent one in that that um, is in the Riley head or in the in the Riley figure.
It's the most consistent one that's on every, like, you can probably see it on everybody. To a certain extent. Like that arm one I showed you, you know the one that does this? Sorry, how, how does that work here? Right, how, how can it work here? It can't, the arms are up and it doesn't help me. So I have to rely on um, artistic rhythm. So let's get the overall shape of her foot here. And then I'll explain all the, the rhythms I added or how I'm using them. There's a thing that there they used there. One of the teachers I used to teach with, um, his name is Gabriel Yaganyan. He's an amazing um, uh, environment artist. And one of the things that used to drive him nuts when we were teaching was when a student would tell him, um, because uh, a lot of students would use uh, Maya to plot their buildings or even scenes or full scenes. And when Gabe would tell them, hey, you need to change this, you know, they'll be like, oh, but I used Maya. So the perspective is perfect. Um, it's like, yeah, but it looks weird. But, but I used Maya, so it can't be wrong. No, it, the perspective is correct, but it looks weird. You need to change it. So it, it's, it's kind of that mentality that you need to kind of break out of. It's like, oh, I need to draw it like this because that's how the model looks. Overall, this looks like this model. But I edited things because I think it would make a better image. Does that make sense? Like no one's gonna miss me not doing this or adding the little, like this is her, um, there's fat and this is the vastus medial lateral. This is the la uh, vastus lateralis out here. But um, that gives me this extra little bump. I, I left it out and no one's gonna miss it. This, um, this is the biceps femoris muscle cutting in like this and then the uh, the calf muscle cutting in from the back but I wanted a smoother transition so I just left it like this no one's gonna miss that I left out instead of making a tenth rib like this I wanted a smoother transition so I left it a curve no one's going to miss that as long as I don't do something completely crazy um, you know, I you know the the drawing will still work. Does that make sense? Okay, so the big stuff, like the you know, just relating things. What, what did I do? So here, we have the obvious Riley one. So I just pictured her um, neck is up. Basically, I did this. So on this side. We have her crotch. And here, I actually brought it up to this. This is an end. This is the this little line here. That's her. Uh, uh, what's it called? Pectoralis muscle, her chest muscle. So I just brought that up from there. Um, there's this rhythm. This is what like. There's a lot of thought that went into this, and I'm just showing you all of them, or most of them. And um, I wanted. Like, I think it's good that I do this so I can show you, you know, I really haven't drawn that much form in, in this image. And if I were to draw form first, I wouldn't be able to think about all this. 
There's a nice uh, gesture coming down from her. There's a twi nice gesture coming from her face. It breaks off to her center line. To her leg. Do you see that one? There's a nice gesture. Now, if I think about this abstractly, what's really going on is she's creating a giant triangle. Like this. And all the weight is slowly moving towards this foot, and it's just this, this one leg that's hanging out. So what I'm gonna what I tried to do was can I keep this a lot smoother? Have this leg. It'll break off a little bit, right? I mean they kind of they'll join somewhere. It comes down and it goes into this leg, going into that heel. Maybe even this side right here, just to accentuate this type of um, gesture or this type of rhythm. This is an artistic rhythm. And part of the reason why I wanted to keep this smooth is they all relate coming down into the, the foot. And this one I have it going out of the, the toe if I were to finish the drawing. And you saw me trying to relate the arms together. somewhat here. I couldn't bend it that much, otherwise it would look weird. Even when I try to uh, draw this little heel, I try to see, can I just pull it from here? Can I even get this, this red line here, to flow into my leg? These are all things you can resolve in the uh, um, in the lay-in stage. Does that make sense? Like even small curves like this, I'm drawing here, but I'm actually thinking about this. Like, can I bring it back to the center line? I'm just trying to find a way to kind of bring it all back, or bring even little small angles together. Even if it's this angle, can I have it point to the heel? So this way, every line that I draw becomes some kind of conscious decision. I think that's, that's to me, at its core, the beauty of the, uh, the Riley method. Even this, coming back into that toe. It's a lot of stuff to think about. But it happens very naturally. Because you're not thinking in terms of form. You're not thinking like, oh, you're not solely thinking about this. I kind of uh, figured this out um, the more I taught and I, and I thought about it. I think when we think, the reason why it's very difficult when we just think straight form is because I think, number one is because form is concrete. You know, it's, it's like I said, it's a before, it's a brain state where Oh, it's I can't change it because um, it's solid, right? Oh crap! I can't erase all this. But anyway, I can't erase all this stuff. I did it all in the same layer. But um, it's okay. Well, um, but when you're in a shape mindset, you're more willing to change stuff, which which is great. And also, I think when we think solely in terms of form, we're only thinking about parts. Like we're not thinking about an image as a whole. We're just thinking in terms of small parts. Like, here's an arm. And even when we're thinking arm, we're like, oh, here's a deltoid. Here's a bicep. Here's the forearm. Whereas when you think in terms of shape, you're just thinking about the whole arm as a shape. 